In case you don't know, I present something called Homes Under the Hammer, which has been on BBC One every weekday for the last 14 years. <laughs> so I can understand why some of you might have missed it. Um, yeah. No, but I'm not here to talk about that today. I'm talking about something which is uh, very much close to my heart. But, um, you know, I'm a relative newcomer to the AN, uh, AONB, so excuse me if I just give a sort of an overview of my you know, initial reactions to it. And that's basically based on a little that I've, I've, been, I've been told uh, prior to today, but also just those first two presentations, you know. And it, <laughs> I thought it was a place that just like designations of bits of the country which are quite pretty. I, I happen to have a house in an AOMB down in, uh, in South Hams and I'm really happy about that and lucky. But it wasn't until today that I recognised that actually the AOMB can be a conduit uh, uh, to uh, opening up these spaces to these kind of projects which are just outstandingly amazing aren't they? I mean I have to say Talk with the greatest respect, they state the bleeding obvious, don't they? I mean, it's like outside space is good for us. We know that. Um, why does it take, you know, the hard work of these kind of people to make the government and the people who make decisions and the drug companies and the NHS, why does it take all that effort to, to get this understood? Because it seems fairly obvious. Uh, and it's usual thing, isn't it? It all comes down to money, I guess. And it's a bit like the project I'm working on. You know, the, the longer term view of this is how much money will these projects save the economy, the NHS, us as taxpayers, as a result of what they do, you know, rather than picking up the pieces further down the line and having to pay for somebody to be in care or, or having to pick up the pieces of a devastated family from somebody who commits suicide or whatever. And, and that, that's very much the part of the project I'm working on as well with the NSPCC. You know, it is a charity. And when you look at what it does, you think, why is this a charity? Surely this should be government funded. Like the projects we've been hearing about this morning. And like what you guys do at the ANB. You know, and I think you can very much be the conduit which says, here are these AONB areas, but in those areas, this is what's happening, my God. They're not just a place where you can go, isn't that a nice tree? There are places where you can go, I can get my mental health back, and that is extraordinary. You know, this is where I can go and I can improve my life and the life of those around me, or, or, or end the, 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 the latter stage of my life in, in relative happiness with those happy memories from the past. So excuse me, speaking out of turn, it's just that's my, my outsider's view of what I've seen in the last 10 minutes, or the last half an hour. Um, and, and I suppose one of the things I'm quite excited about is, is um, you know, I don't know how much the, the greater population knows of what the AMB do. And I think the answer to that, if, if you'll excuse me, is saying probably not as much as you actually do. You know, um, the reality is, um, uh, like, like, like most, like, like I perhaps, before I knew more about it, uh, most people would just think, well, that's just a designation, like a national park or whatever. But so much more is going on, and I think you can play a very active role in, uh, in, in promoting these wonderful things that are going on there. And what I'd like to do is, is offer maybe a conduit as well to help you get the message of the AOMB out there to a greater, uh, a greater um, population, particularly young people who, um, you know, I think we, we, we sort of grew up, I certainly grew up as a, as a child in, a, in an environment where we were encouraged to go off and play in the woods, you know, and I think we've moved towards a society where perhaps parents, for whatever reason, rightly or wrongly, uh, you know, are scared of pushing their children off to go and play in the woods. I used to go off the, the whole afternoon, just a bit off, you know, mum and dad didn't know where I was, I was playing down the woods or, or wherever on the canal banks and stuff. Um, and I think young people, perhaps these days, have been have been have been stopped having that experience for whatever reason, fear of the parents or whatever. So whatever we can do to encourage them out into your areas, the areas that the country's so blessed with, um, then you know all the positive effects we hear about in just a small fraction of the things which I'm sure which are going on in uh, in other AONB areas around the country. Then that's a fantastic thing. So perhaps I can help. Uh, opening up the, the, uh, the minds of, of younger people and their families who, who may not recognise uh, what outstanding opportunities there are uh, in these areas that uh, this country is blessed with. Um, which is a, a sort of uh, an interesting ramble as a, as a precursor to what I'm doing. Uh, uh, and it may well be that uh, the, the next bit of it uh, makes uh, all that come to, to, to sense. I, I do present Homes of the Hammer, I'm a TV property expert, uh, uh, but one of my passions as well is uh, I'm a, a dad. I've got uh, two children, I've got a six-year-old and a nine-year-old. 
So the whole concept of getting them out into the natural environment is really important to me. Um, and also the whole concept of them being safe and living uh, happy, uh, fulfilled and protected uh, childhoods is, is really, really important to me. Uh, and that started many years ago. Um, I, I'm also an author. I, I'm a creative guy, like, like, uh, like, like many uh, arty farty types are, so I actually am I'm an author as well. Uh, about ten years ago I started writing a series of children's books called The Vills. And um, I'm hoping that uh, one of these days the, the, the big red double-decker bus, which takes Herman, who's the hero of the stories, who's the guy behind me on this uh, poster and in, in, the, in the picture there, he gets on a big red double-decker bus each day uh, and he goes on an adventure to a different land, uh, Tidesville for instance, or, or Boardsville, uh, where everyone's bored for whatever reason, or, or, or Coldsville, where, where everyone's cold for whatever reason, as Herman as an outsider uh, then fixes the problem and discovers why everyone in these lands is the way they are. So uh, I'd like to think that one of these days he will be hopping on a big red double decker bus to an, outstair, an, an air of outstanding natural beauty. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> and I'm bribable uh, to, <laughs> as to which one of those it is. Bullsville, <laughs> um, and so it goes on. So what the hell's that got to do with the NSPCC? Well, um, I've been involved in the NSPC since childhood. I don't know if any of you remember this. Uh, many years ago, uh, this was called the League of Pity, wasn't it? I don't know if the NSPCC changed its name to the League of Pity or, or, or whatever it was, but, but I know that uh, my mum was a regional coordinator for the NSPCC, League of Pity or whatever it was at that time. Uh, and, and if you collected lots of uh, money in a little blue egg, uh, you used to get a, a badge. Uh, and that's what I did. I helped my mum uh, go around and collect money from the local children uh, and raising money for this charity, which I sort of knew was a good charity. I didn't know too much about it. Or, as the years have gone on, I've retained my, uh, my association with the NSPCC. I, uh, I've done various charity auctions for them. Uh, and uh, uh, more recently, I came across one of their latest initiatives. Um, and this is really, uh, uh, you know, it's a real targeted uh, uh, opportunity for them and, and something which really captivated uh, my imagination and, and, and made me think, wow. Why hasn't that been done before? Uh, and they've started something called the NSPCC School Service. And their role, their idea, is, is that they will go into every single primary school, so less than 11 year old children, in the UK, and if I'm probably going to take it even younger, they've actually just one in my, in my daughter's school as well, and she's just six. And they will bring the message uh, of the NSPCC and what it can do to protect, support, help uh, during times of crisis to a much younger uh, age group, doing a very age-specific presentation uh, and assembly to the children, very sensitive, put together by the, you know, the cleverest child psychologists and, uh, and, and, uh, and the likes uh, in, in the country, delivered by volunteers who will go in and do these, these speeches. Uh, and the idea is that they introduce the work of the NSPCC uh, to these children in a, in a very age-specific way. Um, and just to make them aware, there's somebody out there who, who will help them if things in their life aren't quite right. I think it's for a six-year-old, they don't really know what's right and what's wrong, uh, which is why we hear the stories of uh, uh, all sorts of horrible stuff going on. You know, uh, abuse uh, comes in lots of, uh, of, of shapes, of course. It comes in from, uh, from, from mental abuse, it comes in from bullying, obviously it comes into sexual abuse and, and, and the horrific things that we occasionally read about. Um, but, but the message overall is that whatever's going on, it's not your fault. 100% of the time, it's not your fault. It's the intervention of a so-called trusted adult who turns out to be a complete, what well, do I say the word? But here we are, we can talk to you. We can, we can help you if things are going on in your world, even if you're just a bit sad, right? And, you know, there's somebody out there who you can talk to. Um, and I think that's... An amazing thing, it's a bit like you know, the stuff we've heard about a bit earlier, you know, trying to intervene and stop rather than pick up the pieces afterwards. You know, let's get the children before the problems occur rather than uh, try and pay for uh, the damage afterwards uh, and, and, and what a price there is to be paid, not only on the children themselves but on their families, on their children and, and it's a pyramid. So if we can stop that, you know, at the grassroots level, at the schools, by talking to them, you know, away from their families, you know, when they're in their safe environment, to the school hopefully, uh, well that's a, a pretty good thing. 
So it occurred to me, here I've got a character who I've created in my books, um, who is a bit of a problem solver, you know, he is a bit of a hero himself, he is a, uh, he's Herman and he, and he takes a helicopter view when he goes into a ville uh, as to why things are going wrong, why is everyone tired in Titusville, why is everyone uh, bored in Boardsville or full in Fullsville, and because he's an outsider he can take a slightly different view on things. And, and I suppose the greater picture of the books is to encourage children to do exactly that. It's to say, this is your world, this is the world of Fallsville, this is the world of Tidesville. But a bit like your world, it doesn't always have to be like that. You don't always have to be tired, you don't always have to be sad, uh, you don't always have to be waking up in the morning thinking you might be beaten to death by your parents. So I've written a book specifically for the NSPC series called Sandsville. And uh, a strange title, you might think, but as with all the books, it's whimsical. You know, it's not a hard-hitting sexual abuse book. Uh, it's just a, 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 a beautifully illustrated children's uh, story. And as usual in, in the stories, it's whimsical. Herman arrives in Sadsville. Everyone's sad. They're crying all the time. And blah blah blah. Um, he. Uh, he meets lots of characters. This is Sandy, the saddest person in Sadsville. Everyone's sad, as you can see. Uh, well, he, it's not long before he starts to uncover the reason why everyone in Sadsville is sad. Uh, and that's because uh, the man who makes the crisps at the local crisp factory is actually putting real onions into the cheese and onion crisps. <laughs> so when people have the cheese and onion crisps, they've got real onions, they start crying, therefore everyone's sad. It's whimsical, it's silly. Uh, but the idea is that the children read the book, they kind of try and figure it out, and there's a bit of a challenge just to see if you can beat Herman uh, in terms of uh, finding out the reason why everyone is sad. And, and it all comes down to Angus, who's the, uh, the Scottish owner of, of the uh, Chris Factory, who's, as I said, using real brilliant ones. But as I said, the, the, the sort of subtle uh, messages of the book are, are to encourage people, uh, children, to take a slightly helicopter view. Uh, and at the end of it, more directly, um, there is a, a call to action, which is the child line telephone number. Now, you'll, you've probably heard that child line's just celebrating its 30-year anniversary. It's set up by uh, Dame Esther Ranson 30 years ago. Um, and it's a number that uh, the children can call to get uh, advice and help. It's their uh, su support services. It is for them, okay? Uh, it's a private number that they call. Uh, it's private conversations. And unless there's an immediate uh, threat of serious harm, uh, then, then uh, the, the, the social services don't get involved, it's for the children, but clearly uh, it's people who are trained and who will talk the children through whatever problems they're experiencing. So at the end of the book, it's if you're sad for whatever reason, then there's an organisation out there, there's a telephone number, there's friendly people who you can call who can help you. So in one of those wild moments of, uh, uh, of uh, thinking I could make a difference to the world, I uh, decided, wouldn't it be great if I could give a free copy of this book with all its subtle messages and its relevance to child line and all that kind of stuff uh, to every single nine and ten year old in the UK. That would then prepare them for a visit by the NSPCC and one of these trained uh, uh, counsellors who will go in and do a, uh, an age-specific um, assembly. So it acts very much as a compliment to what the NSPCC is doing. Uh, of course, then, it also has the call to action. And if it's in children's homes, on the bookshelf, uh, you know, on, on the side there, uh, you know, subtly getting into not only the children uh, who are being given it for free, but also their families, their siblings, their parents, uh, and again, by stealth, probably getting into the kind of families we really needed to be in without the parents thinking, that's a book about child sex abuse, that's not coming in here. Well, they probably wouldn't say it like that, but you know what I mean. They would say, mm, you're not having that book. Um, as it is, it's, just, it's an illustrated children's book. You know, that's not going to undermine what we're trying to achieve if we're nasty people. So, uh, how the hell do you do that? There's one and a half million nine and ten year olds in the UK. How am I going to do that? So, you know, you think like you, you think laterally, okay, right. 
So well, let's talk about local, local, edu local education authority regions. Let's ask local businesses to donate a relatively small amount of money, 1,500 quid, and for that you get um, uh, sponsorship in the book, you get your name in front of all the children uh, with their families in, in the area. So in Bath, for instance, where we launched it in November, uh, you know, 5,000 books um, uh, uh, have all been published and distributed to homes in <coughs> Bath. So the businesses get you know, a feel-good factor of helping out and also get their, their message across uh, into, um, into the, this, this very targeted um, uh, targeted uh, uh, audience, if you like. Um, we've got lots of press coverage for what mm. we do. We've had lots of support from the media. That's been really nice. I mean, my position on telly, I think, probably helps a bit. Um, but, you know, I'm trying to abuse that as much as I can to get as much publicity uh, as I can for this project. And, and why, why the hell not? Um, we, um, as I said, started with the local uh, authorities, local, local regions, and, and it's done really well. But, but I've only got a limited amount of time in my life, and, and it soon became apparent that um, uh, to take this national is a huge undertaking. Uh, to do it regionally, by region, uh, which we are doing, we're, we've, we've done Bath, and we're next on to uh, Bristol, uh, which we're, we're doing sponsorship for at the moment, and Somerset, which we've also got sponsorship for at the moment, uh, and, and uh, um, um, Wiltshire, which is the next one, actually expanding out from our, our central base in Bath. Um, and, and, and sponsorship, we're, we're getting sponsorship for those, for those other areas. Um, getting lots of support from the, the likes of the councils and most importantly from your good selves. The lovely people at the Mendip Hills area of outstanding natural beauty saw uh, the advantages of what we're doing and an opportunity for them to partner with us uh, in, in this project. But also get your message about what you're doing uh, out to uh, this a uh, very, very targeted group of, of individuals, the nine and ten year olds, and their families and siblings. And I'd like to think it's something which maybe other areas of outstanding natural beauty would consider, or ideally on the national level. Let's get the message of what you're doing out there to a bigger audience. We've had great support from the people in Bath and like to sell, spec savers uh, and, and various other people. Um, we're going to have uh, the, the three that I've talked about, the Bristol, Somerset and, uh, and, and Wiltshire carrying on. We're going to do those as regional versions and there will always be an opportunity just to be part of a, a regional version moving forward. But I want to take this national. Uh, you know, the amount of effort involved in getting one uh, sponsor for 1,500 quid uh, it, it is, is massive. And, and I think I've only got a limited amount of time. There's a very small team of people working on this uh, with me, Lorraine Morgan, Brinkhurst MBE, uh, former Mayor of Bath being one of them, um, but to try and get some national sponsors involved, you know, offering them an opportunity uh, for a relatively small amount of money. We reckon we need about half a million quid in total to get every single child uh, in the UK age 9 and 10 a free copy of this book. So that's 10 sponsors of 50 grand, it's 20 sponsors of 25 grand or whatever. Uh, because uh, that's the way we think it goes. So we're going to have a, a launch in the Houses of Parliament in, in the autumn. Uh, and that is our that is our, our promise to the people we're working alongside. So, if any of you know of it, businesses you think might be interested in this or or, or, or can help us in any way, uh, that uh, will be much appreciated. And I guess this is what drives me, uh, and this is what uh, drives the other people who do these amazing projects in your areas. Um, if just one child is saved from the kind of abuse we see, then uh, you know. That'll be my job done. It's priceless, really, isn't it? Just one child. That's all. Out of, out of the 1.5 million books I'm going to get out there, if we just help one child uh, avoid uh, sexual abuse or all the forms of abuse, then, then that's, uh, that's pretty good to me. So thank you very much. It's a challenge, but it's lovely to have the opportunity to talk to you about it. And uh, yeah, thank you for letting me share your great organisation.